I'll, I'll kick it off because this is uh so the the map is called broken moon is that what it is yes so can you tell us just a little bit about like the lore behind the map and you know how it came to be sure back after season eight rand who is our designer on mayhem started working on the next map we pitched a few ideas we started playing with the idea of a moon and snowballed from there because we knew in season 10 fear was coming and uh there was this whole story about his prophecy and it just started all these started coming together we always imagined like what is it that you know we knew that the moon got hit and it affected boreas but what would the aftermath be well how did they live with that so the moon here represents all the work that's been going on since Seer was born so it's about 26 years in the making that you know a lunar expedition was sent to the moon to survey all the damage they knew there was a lot of work to be done but before they could bring people to the moon to fix things they needed to make it habitable so they brought science departments up here to create a terraformer and atmosphere station. So you can see the pink sky, it's like an artificial atmosphere that was created. And this colony was formed called uh, the Colony of Hope. And it's on the moon Cleo. Workers were able to start coming here. And we've got the promenade, which you can see across from the terraformer, this big giant wall. Those are apartments um, where most of the workers live. And there's some homes scattered about the moon as well. And these people work here, they're they're all kind of pitching in to try to fix uh, the damage and save their planet. Now, along the way, we've got things like, uh, you know, private industry have come here as well to increase funding because it's very expensive to try to fix the moon. Kind of all segued into what, what's happening now, which is the Apex Games have arrived. Someone struck a deal with Eduardo Silva uh, in exchange for funding to help save their planet they allowed the game to come on the moon and become the next arena. We can just talk about this for a really quick. So this is the terraformer. This is what Ed was talking about with how they were starting to terraform the moon. So this is the actual POI that is doing the terraforming. You can see there's like stuff coming out of the top. It's generating an atmosphere. It's spinning around, trying to create a habitable atmosphere. Um, you know, there's there's this like spiraling water underneath here that that further helps kind of sell that idea. Um, and when it comes to gameplay, we we think this is this is actually going to be a pretty highly contested POI. Um, it is fairly central in the map. It's not too big, but it does support like we'd say about two to three teams kind of comfortably. And from here, you can really kind of see and get a little bit of a lay of the land in terms of like landmarking. So if you're like up top, you can actually get. This is like the sweet spot. You can actually get up here, um, but it's kind of hard to stay up here for too long. Mm. Um, you can get like right on the edge. Oh, really? We don't want you going too high up, but you can get on the edge so you can get a good uh, a good view. Um, and you can kind of see there's like um, that big wall, that big blue and white wall in the distance. That's the promenade. So we can go over there later. Um, but then you can start looking around and you can see other landmarks um, over the rocks and over in the horizon. like. To the south, there's uh, one of the Atmos stations. Um, you have uh, another Atmos station uh, northeast, and then there's um, a few other POIs you can kind of see peeking over the horizon through here. But you can see the terraformer has these like there's these arms that that link up to um, different directions, sort of like different cardinal directions you can head through the map. And these are really good points to defend when people are trying to come up. So we find that the terraformer is this like kind of king of the hill. Uh, sort of situation, but you can't you can't really defend it all from one spot. You kind of have to spread out a little bit. You can slide down these arms; it's really fun. Um, you can slide down the interior of the arms as well. Um, and then there's just like yeah, these these interior spots with the legs. You can see like to Ed's point, we were um, we're trying to sell the story through artwork as well. Um, so this like there's a lot of posters and and little visual storytelling pieces across across the map that you see. Yeah, and then this is just another way back up to the top. There's a vertical zip line here. Yeah, and then all three arms are, are kind of similar, and that's just kind of a loop. And then you can, the other thing uh, that's kind of unique about this POI is the there's an exterior zip rail um, that just sort of like wings you around the perimeter of it. So you can, you can use that to kind of rotate around a little quicker and get from one leg to the other. Fun fact, the uh, terraformer is named Bertha because it's Project Rebirth was the name of the project. One of our artists desperately wants to call this the flush because of the swirling water at the bottom. <laughs> um, but yeah, bit of bit of a toilet bowl down there. Yeah, but it's fun. You'll find you'll if you're trying to control the top, you'll kind of like jump down into the water below to try to escape or get away. That happens a lot. Actually, we could probably just go through one of these. Um, yeah. These are our these are our lunar 
Well, Ed, do you want to talk about these? Yeah, so this represents um, the CRC and the NAB. So we got the Clio Recovery Council and the National Alliance of Boreas. They were the ones that kind of co-funded this mission to the moon. And these were the first kind of uh, astronauts that came to survey the damage. They set up these camps. You'll see some astronaut suits here back when they were having to explore um, the moon before the atmosphere was uh, created. So yeah, throughout you'll see a few of these uh, camps and uh, they're really fun little areas to explore. Yeah, so those those are all, they're kind of like these uh, these these pieces that we that we put together to make a bunch of different variations of those buildings. So it's like it's like a style that you need to get kind of get used to and and learn. Um, but they're all over the map and they all play. Uh, some of them play really similarly because they're the same configurations, but other ones are in different configurations. Um, so we're coming up to the promenade. Um, this is uh, a really popular POI um, because it is sort of this. Uh, this really centralized choke point and a lot of traffic flows through here. Um, so there's a few ways up into the promenade. There's ramps on the sides, but you can also take these zip lines. And this is where the people of Clio would um, find their basic supplies. It's like their general stores, their pharmacies, it's basically how they can survive up here. This is where they get their um, their everyday goods as they live upstairs in the apartments. Yeah, you can see continuing on theme, uh, this one also has a unique zip rail about it. So you can kind of zip above the action, take you through these doors that you can't wow. get on them everywhere unless you're like, you know, someone like Pathfinder where he can he can grapple to the uh, to the zip rail and, you know, other legends that can get the height, but there's certain starting points for the zip rail as well. Entrances and exits, you know, a bunch of different ways in and out. So it's really good for, this area is really good for defensive legends. And there's some, some of these kind of narrow hallways around as well that prove for really good flanks just to push through these uh, these doors. Yeah, so we, we find ourselves a lot of the times in playtesting, the big question arises, do we go through the promenade or do we go around it? Because um, going through mm. the promenade, if there's a team in there, it's like, it's, it's a pretty good choice you have to make. Like, can you can you squeeze through or are you going to, are you going to actually have to fight someone? There's kind of a sneaking route as well under the promenade. Over here, there's two pathways um, you can take to underneath it just to try to avoid some of the action, but kind of put your back at risk as well. So when you're coming through here, you really have to watch. <laughs> you really have to watch your back and make sure there isn't a team above you. Where else should we go, Ed? I guess we could go to the core. That's another major POI. Uh, so we can go through like... some of these houses. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, we can go to these houses here. But yeah, Ed, why don't you talk about these these buildings? Sure. So these are, I guess, uh, government uh, signed housing for the workers. Mm. Uh, they're quite swanky. I guess they got to make it worthwhile for them to come all the way to the moon to give up their lives on, on Boreas. But uh, Boreas, we um, established from Sears lore trailer has a very uh, dominant African culture. So we kind of brought in a few influences to make it, you know, feel like there's some of that here as well. Um, but yeah, it's got all the amenities needed to survive on the moon. Yeah, so from a gameplay standpoint, these uh, buildings, I think we have, there's two different ones. There's like a smaller one and a bigger one. Um, but these buildings are pretty common. And these are, um, these are like destination points we use a lot for the, for the, uh, the zip rails. So you'll see over here, um, I'll show you something that's kind of cool about these. Yeah, so this is the other variation. Um, it's a little larger. These are really, really fun to defend because they have these like posts here, um, these kind of post up points on the edges here where you can kind of just watch down the line, watch down the zip rail line to make sure another team isn't trying to run up on you. One of the one of the fun things about this is um, is actually just if you come in it on a zip rail, you can uh, you can get a good like momentum slide coming. Um, in through those doors and so when you're coming into a good point we find ourselves doing that all the time and you kind of like when the door is closed you just slide in and like crash through the door it's it's a really good feeling but i think we'll head to the to the core next um that's another major poi these bridges um also very very popular positions um for fighting they create like a good hold for your team so the core is basically the energy source for the moon they built this to power all their uh, various scientific endeavors we see little yellow uh, power stations throughout it's kind of where they uh, distribute some of that energy that they've stored so you'll find them throughout the map but this is where all the power is generated 
these are our funky uh, alien plants as well. Was there anything that uh, kind of inspired you guys with the the style of art here or the visual style that you wanted to go with for this map? Um, well, I, I mentioned this in a few interviews. So one of the strongest themes was uh, heaven and hell, right? We've done other themes like fire and ice and um, tropical kind of settings. But for this one, we were going to be on a barren moon and, and we wanted to contrast that with um, the lush terraformed areas. So heaven and hell was kind of the, the, the motifs I was pushing on the team. and um especially the the grassy lush side was you know inspired by english gardens and monet paintings like that soft pastel sky and you'll see bionomics later has um these giant lily pads and and really lush flowers so that really wanted to contrast against what we knew was going to be more of a drabber kind of gray alien looking place we knew that we couldn't have too much of that because you want people to uh you know relates to the areas that they're going to be playing in for a long period of time right if you're going to spend mm -hmm. hours in this you don't want them to get tired or you know fatigued by too much of a gray uh ambiance so we do have some of that moon vibe but then we contrasted that with more of an earthly terraformed half of the moon in the middle here the honey pot as we call it so like the best loot is going to be here in the top middle um it's one of the sort of harder places to get to uh, if you look up, you can see there's actually a hole. Um, so you can skydive uh, into the top here. Um, if you get a good plane path, you can skydive right through that hole. Uh, it's also kind of, we, we internally, we call it like a blender. Um, so when you, if you do land on the edge, uh, those arms will kind of kick you down as well. Uh, so you can use that for like a speed drop if you want. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind of like, it's a tricky spot to defend from the middle because you, you kind of always have to watch um, every direction and these things are rotating. You don't really know where people can come from. Um, so we find like people defend a lot of these arms um, and kind of hold up in here. Um, these are pretty tricky spots to uh, to get people out of. Um, the other good, the other thing that's really uh, unique about this point of interest is the fan below here. Um, so you'll see this like blue, um, blue energy. You can actually jump into it. It'll push you up and you can use that Ooh. to, uh, to escape, to enter, you know, um, you can use it to just kind of like rotate around the POI if you want, but it does put you at a disadvantage um, and you are a bit of a sitting duck. So similar similar mechanic to uh, what you guys might have seen on World's Edge with the updraft, but this one, this one doesn't damage you. And so you'll see that this mechanic across the map in a few spots, this blue and uh, this blue glow. Uh, anytime you see a, a spot like that, that'll actually lift you in the air. So we put those in spots where we like naturally it would kind of be a death pit, like you just jump in there and die. But we decided we didn't really want that, so we put this sort of like safety net in. So it's sort of a uh, a way a way that you're just not going to immediately die. This map seems quite large. Um, so it's roughly the size of World's Edge. It's a little bit bigger than World's Edge, but you will find that once once you have like a full game of 60 and people are just ripping around on the zip rails, that it, it actually feels kind of tight and a little quick. So the zip rails were like one of our ideas for getting rotations, like quicker rotations. And if you're kind of out of the action and you're, you're in sort of like a downbeat and you're looking for action, um, this is one of the levers you can use to to kind of close the distances and stuff like that. So this is a launch pad. Uh, it'll take you up to a zip rail so you can grab it. There's a couple of those. You can see on your mini map, it looks sort of like a, a buckle uh, or like a, a rectangle with a dot. Those are all the pads that take you on the rails. Um, and the rails are identified by uh, by the red the, line. The red lines? I was going to yeah. say, is there no, there's no balloons in this map, kind of like Storm Point? There's um, one, one balloon. Yeah, there's one balloon right now. And that's oh. at uh, Eternal Acres, or sorry, Eternal Gardens, which we'll go to next. Cool. Um, um, we'll we'll head this way to Stasis. Well, everyone's at Alpha Base. Should we just look at Alpha Base? Oh, yeah, I guess we should. <laughs> yeah. So you you can take that zip rail into Alpha Base there below. So this is the basically the um, first location where they landed on the moon. It's a giant crater. Uh, this is where they set up their first camp. Uh, it's the largest lunar camp. Um, and it's just this network of these lunar habitat. Yeah, so this is, it's kind of like a figure eight POI. Um, there's a good like figure eight loop going through it. And uh, this is sort of um, 
what we call like a town POI. So it's it's a bit smaller. It doesn't support too many squads, and it's just it's just a good place to rumble. To be honest, you have these good like loot uh, loot circuits that you can do through these buildings and just kind of rip through them in a in a loop and pick up all the loot. And you can get on top of these as well, uh, obviously, and just, these are good really good positions to just kind of sit up and get away of the land when you're on top of these buildings. So you can climb all these buildings like all the way. Yeah, a big a big uh, a big thing for us is is verticality and uh, making sure that if it looks like somewhere you can go uh, that you can go there. Yeah, so this is one of the longer lines in the game uh, for the zip rails and it connects all the way from alpha base to stasis. How fast do these things go compared to zip lines? Uh, will you tell me how <laughs> do they feel faster? Much faster, <laughs> they seem. It's hard to get my head around. They, it feels like they accelerate. They do. Yeah, they so have. they take oh. they take your your uh, basically like inertia and momentum into account. So like if it goes if it's going up or down, if you're climbing up, it'll slow down, and if you're going downhill, it'll speed up. Um, but it eventually maxes out. Here we're approaching the stasis net in what we call the failed forest. So the idea is that the terraformer. Um, you'll see like a radius of, of what's been terraformed from that central building and uh parts of the, ma of the map didn't really take and this is one of those areas that didn't quite take so it's a bit of a creepier forest and the stasis net is one of the first uh things they set up here to contain all the uh rock debris that you can see in the skybox um to prevent it from crashing into boreas as well as crashing back onto the moon so that's that grid you see up there. If anything were to happen to that, big damage happening. Uh, this is one of my favorite POIs on the map. Um, I really like it. Uh, it's got a good, um, sort of like a good uh, way to contest the area. You can, so if we head towards the uh, the dish here, you can see that you can actually get on top of this thing. And so it gives you like a nice 360 um, spot, but you don't have a lot of cover up there. There's a little bit, but we find a lot of teams will, they'll kind of sit up there and they'll get into some pokey fights with other teams trying to enter the area. So from up here, you have a pretty good pretty good view at some of the chokes coming into the area, like the, the one over there um, to the east, you can see um, this, yeah, that special choke there that leads to Eternal Gardens, um, which we can go to next. But anytime you sort of see that kind of fencing or, or uh, uh, or style, um, you know, that it's leading to Eternal Gardens. But yeah, you can kind of just loop around on this thing and, and look for people. Um, you can also go underneath it. So there's a bowl, there's a little hidden bowl underneath this thing. Uh, oh, yeah. That also, that also has a central zip that'll take you back in. So we've had some like really fun endings at this point of interest. It's one of my favorites. Um, you just have teams like trying to trying to survive in here, looking out the windows, trying to like communicate and say which door they're coming in and stuff like that. So it's yeah, we can we can move on. We can head on to Colonel Acres here. And it's supposed to be like a memorial garden for, you know, the people of Boreas, the people that are here on the moon to kind of remember that day that the moon got hit. So, yeah, there's beautiful topiaries, uh, strange creatures, beautiful gardens here. Central Tower actually has the one zip balloon on the map. And inside is, is quite a lovely kind of almost like a tranquil meditation spot for people that are, you know, when they get off work, they can come here and, and chill out. Yeah, so we can go in the bottom. So it's, I I call it a fairy pool down here. I don't know if Ed if Ed has a better word for it, but I call it the fairy pool. Um, but yeah, it's just a really nice uh, stained glass uh, thing with god rays coming in and everything. It just looks gorgeous. Um, but there's some really good loot down here. There's also a, um, a vertical zip line, two vertical zip lines that take you back up to the top. So when you're landing, this is a good place to land, um, just in this uh, central central area here. And then, yeah, you can take this balloon that takes you up through the stained glass, which is a super cool moment. And that'll just, yeah, eject you over over top of the whole thing. So you can kind of pick like where, where you want to move to, but you can't get too far. Oh, this POI is just like so gorgeous. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it was one of the first ones we actually tackled. Um, it, it kind of represented that heavenly side. Yeah. Which uh, who do who designed the the little sculptures though? Like the little like uh, these little animal sculptures that in the. So Aaron, uh, one of our concept artists, did a great job with those. Um, you know, I think we did four or five of them. Maybe one of them didn't make the cut, but they're really cute. Um, you can we made it so that you can get underneath them and and through them because some of those spots felt pretty tight but you should be able to get through uh and then yeah you can enter into the divide so this is another uh town poi it's sort of like two two towns facing each other with bridges in the middle and then there is a zip rail connection 
that loops around. Um, so if you're trying to get, you know, a quick flank on the other team or something, uh, you can use these if rails to come around and attack from the sides instead of face on. And then also, yes, there's uh, the blue um, energy down here, the updraft energy that'll, that'll push you up if you jump into it. And the, the vibe we were going for with this POI was that this town was once uh, connected. It was once, you know, it probably had a main street down the middle. Uh, and then just to show the kind of uh, fragility of the moon, it got split in half. These bridges have been set up to kind of almost hold the pieces together, but then that explains why we see the blue glow and the, the updraft um, happening there. So it's a, it's one of my favorite POIs. Uh, I think it's going to create some cool um, kind of side to side, you know, middle building to middle building kind of uh, sniping effect if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, we find a lot of the times you'll have just one team on either side and then they're trying to sort of figure out how to cross the gap. Um, you know, if they use abilities or if they use, if they just run across the, the bridge or if they use the rail to go around from the side. So there's a lot of interesting things and interesting ways you can kind of attack. Is that, was that like your intent when you're designing a lot of these POIs like to potentially have them like have double usage? Like it's, it's in the BR, but it's also potentially useful in the future. Yeah, we we think about that. It's in the back of our mind um, consistently. But one of the one of the things that we we just make sure is like you know if we look at this as like yes maybe maybe this could work for gun run or something like that. But we make sure that it works for the BR first and foremost. This the way this town is laid out. This is just like a really classic kind of uh, level design you know technique, which is just like you put a big pit and two bridges and you create these, you, you just really create these really strong front lines as a result. Uh, you can see here, actually, there's a waterfall um, down here that's being affected by the, uh, the the updraft gravity and the energy down there. So it's kind of like not behaving exactly like a waterfall should. Um, that's just like a little, what do we call that thing? Ed? Does it have a, did it have a name? Waterfall? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, I think it was just supposed to like evaporate, right? Like it's just, just oh, yeah. okay. it's just supposed to flow upwards. So it's kind of the water is kind of getting pushed up by the by the energy there. So that's just a cool little thing. Um, and the so surrounding, can... sorry, the surrounding biome. You know, we were kind of going for white meadows, so a lot of white kind of lavender flowers. You called it the cloud forest. Uh, you'll see these big white mushrooms in the in the cliffs themselves. Uh, just trying to separate the various uh, POIs so they don't all have. You know, I think we have more than four or five biomes. Uh, on this map, slight variations, but it's just, you know, flowers and color were, were ways to get that variety for us. And we're in Bionomics now, which is uh, probably the one that's closest, closest inspired to um, like a Monet painting. It's what, it's what I was giving as reference for the ponds and the lily pads, beautiful uh, pink sky. Yeah, so you'll see we, we have some of these circular buildings here now. Um, there's a few of these across the map, um, but they're the most prominent here in Bionomics and in another point of interest called Cultivation. And they're just they're just really fun. They have uh, they have a good circuit just around the outside of them, and then there's a good core to them where you can sit and defend. Uh, you can also get on the rooftops and use those to defend. They're actually really strong defend defensible positions, just sort of sitting in the donut in the middle of the donut. So it can be pretty hard to weed teams out of there. Big landmark for this one, so you know you're in Bionomics, obviously, is like the water and the lily pads and everything, but there's a huge uh, pink tree in the kind of in the center. It's a little it's a little trenchy, uh, I'd say. That's kind of like part of this point of interest is, is trenchy. It's got these uh, these open spaces you need to cross. Um, has some of these, uh, these wooden, uh, these roots um, that are um, these arches, so you can kind of use them as, as vertical cover as well uh, to protect yourself from above and then there's a bunch of little secret tunnels and stuff like that uh in between the bridges and things like that that, that you'll have to find but lots of paths in and out and this is one of those points of interest that connect directly back to uh, terraformer uh, so you can see on the map there there's a choke that'll lead you directly back to terraformer just from a lens so like you know obviously you're thinking about game usage and and um obviously making these maps interesting from like a play style standpoint and, and you're thinking about final circles how much like of the design is influenced by thought of how it's going to be used in competitive or how it might be used in you know a high level ranked and you know can we keep this because that'll be too strong is, is that kind of stuff you have to deal with and if so like how have you dealt with it on on this map yeah that's um that's all part of balancing for sure um you know sometimes sometimes we uh 
we have a theory on what's going to be really strong and what we think is going to be really strong. And we test it against, you know, that in situations where we actually play test it. We find, you know, it's it's pretty hard to tell um, exactly how it's going to shake out. But once it gets in the live environment within like the first day, community has tested it probably a thousand times the amount that we will um, right. just because of the sheer volume. We always look for points that are like too strong or that are really powerful. Like I can give you guys an example uh, over here with something that we had to sort of balance out. Um, so we made these these rounder buildings um, and they have this this kind of lip on them here. Um, so this is like one of the strongest defensible positions that we find uh, that we've created in this area. Mm. Um, so you can sort of sit on the lip, you can go over the lip. Lovely. And uh, yeah, and so one of the things that was making this uh, sort of more more powerful was uh, actually the grass on top. So the grass on top uh -huh. was really, really, really high and really visible. And so that was one of the things where we were just like, oh, yeah, there's there's too much grass up here. We need to we need to pull this back a bit so that um, hide behind this thing and also hide in the grass. But we find, you know, like if you have a team in here that's defending it, um, you know, it's it's a strong, it's definitely a strong position, but there's many of these. So you can have a bunch of teams uh, kind of hold up in each one, poking at each other and stuff like that. But, you know, eventually you're going to have to come out of your of your position. Um, yeah, that was an awesome example. So we have two Atmos stations on this map. Uh, this is Atmos Station A, and the other one we call Backup in case this one were to go down. While the terraformer is what kind of seeded the area, this is what kind of created the breathable environment. It's quite a large POI, lots of areas to loot on the, uh, on the periphery. Yeah, so it's a good it's a good um, vertical POI. This is probably one of our tallest POIs, I'd say, um, are the Atmos stations. Really, really easy to land at you can, when you're landing. Uh, most people land up here. They go inside afterwards. Really good defendable defensible position up here um you have really good height advantage uh yeah and really just really good places to defend um if you're into sniping if you get overrun you can kind of go back to the center here and sort of bunker yourselves in here but there are four ways in and there's vertical zips so you have to kind of be mindful of that uh, as well and the vertical zips these, these will take you down to the bottom uh, they should also give you a good view of the uh, exterior vertical zips in the front as well so you can kind of tell if someone's trying to go up yeah, and you can just bunker yourselves in here pretty well. Just sort of do a nice uh, loop, staying at the bottom, going back to the top, uh, and vice versa. Um, so it is pretty hard to uh, to get a team out of there, but there's lots of options to get out of there. You can go from the back. Um, there's rails that that take you pretty close from the back. Uh, there's a ramp at the back. There's lots of zip lines taking you up, and then of course all the legends and their abilities uh, as well can kind of get people out of there. We provided a lot of cover around the exterior too. That that provides um, some height cover, you know, so you can get in these these uh, shipping containers and kind of protect your head from snipers above and stuff like that. Uh, good periphery. Uh, these these bridges right here, these two bridges are unique to the Atmos stations. So these are really fun to fight in. Uh, there's some good windows, ways in and out. You can also get on top of the bridge. And then there's these panels here too that'll, that you can use to climb uh, up onto the bridge. This is uh, cultivation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, this is this is the sister POI to Binomics. Um, mm. It's a little it's a little smaller than Binomics, um, but this is this is definitely one of the sweatier points of interest on the map as well. A lot of people like to land here. Uh, Ed, do you want to talk a bit about cultivation? Yeah. This this is basically where they uh, would have set up their farming and agriculture. Uh, kind of created the food for the uh, the food source for the moon. The people living here you'll see that they've got these craters that they've turned in sources for some of their kind of wrapped them up in tarps and filled it with water and and used it to kind of um, farm because because the moon didn't really have a water source at the beginning so this is kind of where they started uh you'll see some crops around the edges of some of these uh they probably bring these to the promenade to sell there um kind of got a greenhouse vibe to it a lot of foliage and, and vegetation growing on the walls. Yeah, cultivation is like it's like our moon farm POI. So mm. you can see in inside there's like these like UV lights and stuff under under the ground that's uh, keeping all the plants growing. Uh, lots of plants, lots of harvesting, things like that. Um, there's plotted uh, farm plots on the outside and stuff like that. So in terms of yeah, just controlling it and stuff. Again, it's like really these donut buildings getting hold up in these donut buildings and trying to control them. But say the difference to this one is that there's a bit more sort of elevation around the perimeter in some spots so when you're sitting in in these buildings uh there's a few spots where people can stand uh, to sort of see you uh, a lot more clearly but yeah it's a really it's a really intense poi pretty fast pretty fast poi um 
a lot of people land here to get those those quick fights in the beginning and just uh, contest the area. Uh, so we can head to the foundry next and we'll start looking at some of our industrial points of interest. And so the foundry represents, actually it's one of the POIs that kind of connects Catalyst to the moon uh, the most. So the foundry is where they are processing ferrofluid. Uh, this is mm. actually extracted from the geology of the moon itself. It's one of the things they discovered when they um, came to the moon, that the moon's surface was quite robust. They were able to like uh, find this, this ferrofluid, create it. They're actually using it to patch the moon. And if you look on the other side of the moon uh, in a skybox, you'll see ferrofluid literally holding pieces of rock together. Um, like they're trying to pull it and keep it from falling apart. Um, and in the back of the, of the foundry, you'll see that they've got this tractor beam on a, on a giant asteroid. And so this is what they do is they kind of grab a rock, drag it into the uh, upper area of the foundry, and then they crush it and create and, and get to the to the minerals on the inside. This is where I think, you know, Catalyst governed the ferrofluid and, and figured out how to harness it for herself. Um, you can also defend the foundry from the upper uh, platform. You can't. I don't. Can't go all the way to the top, but you can defend from this edge here. So again, another like highly exposed uh, location, but highly defendable. You get a lot of good sight lines for people coming into the foundry. But once you <laughs> once you get shot, there's really nowhere to go. Um, you just kind of have to go down and escape. And although yeah, the surrounding sort of area is is you know a little more barren, um, the POI itself is quite colorful with the greens and the blues. So we tried to to make sure that the POIs had a lot of color to them if the biome itself was a bit more barren. Smaller yellow buildings, you'll see that they say worker station. Um, these are scattered throughout the map as well. It's just like a common area for people to like get supplies or it's a break room or something like that. You'll see those throughout. So the next three are actually all kind of tied together. At some point, you know, the, the work on the moon was maybe slowing down. People were getting a little, um, disappointed with the progress so the government had to figure out other ways to infuse money and effort so they allowed private industry to set up a shop on the moon and uh, we have this group called kabindi group and they uh, set up a ship breaking uh, operation and so breaker wharf is where ships are brought to be uh, taken apart then we have dry gulp which is where a lot of the pieces uh, end up and then the production yard is kind of where they take some of those pieces and recycle them and repurpose them and send them back out. So this is a quite a large POI. It harkens a bit back to like Sorting Factory it has a bit of that vibe, um, but it's got its own flavor as well. It's got this sort of like small, not not a full horseshoe, but like half a horseshoe. We'll say semicircle. I don't know what I'm getting at here, but um, <laughs> it's got <laughs> it's got this nice loop through the center of it, like through the interior. And uh, so there's a lot of like CQC fights in here and stuff that can happen. Um, and you just you can kind of just like go through the space through the interior. You can also get again, you can get on the roof of this thing. Um, it's a pretty powerful position, pretty dominant position. But again, yeah, you're a bit you're a bit of a sitting duck up here, and other teams can can push you and come from a bunch of different ways. There's a few ways up. Uh, there's like ramps at the back. There's a zip line. There's a couple of climbs that you'll find to get on top of it. So there's there's a bunch of access points to kind of get a team out of there. One of the things that's, that's interesting with this point of interest is uh, way at the back. There's like a landing zone way at the back, um, and the landing zone way back here has has some pretty solid loot. What's really interesting about this one is like when you're contesting this one, uh, a lot of the times what I do is if I see a squad going to the back here, I actually go to those buildings right next to it. So yeah, so if a team lands there, right, you can kind of sit up here and not, 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 uh, uh, you know, and like kind of hold them back there from a more dominant position. So sometimes, sometimes that's what I'll, I'll do is if, if I see someone landing back there, I'll actually, I won't go for the direct contest and I'll actually land at these buildings. I think that's it. Um, you can see like in the front too, um, there's a lot of like, uh, there's a land bridge up front there. It gives you some good over under. The zip rails all kind of head that way as well. And again, even though it's more of our barren look, we added uh, some strong pops of this rusty red uh, that kind of fills in pools and, and has affected some of the vegetation. So it's just bringing in some more color uh, as well in here. We'll head on to Dry Gulch. Um, we'll just keep going north towards Dry Gulch. Dry Gulch is another point of interest uh, in this in this same kind of uh, industrial family. Um, I'd say in terms of um, just the team and the dev team, this is probably one of the more popular POIs. I'd say it's probably 
the most popular the most popular poi um especially in terms of like the members of the team that are really skilled at the game uh this point of interest is really interesting especially this spot right here um it's just it's another kind of cyclical donut uh carousel type shaped point of interest uh, that you can loop around there's a zip line that cuts through that's super fun that's like one of my absolute favorite zip lines um yeah, and so a lot of people, you'll find a lot of people landing here. Um, some of the good loot is in the center. The dry gulch is kind of like, that's like the main building. And then there's sort of like a sub building over here. So this one kind of, you know, you can contest it, but it sort of divides teams up into two most of the time, where one team will get the good building over there and the other one will get this one, uh, which is still really good, but not as strong as a, of a position. Um, you can also get on top of these as well. There's a few of these buildings in the game. I think we just call them or warehouse buildings, I can't really remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think what people like about this one is uh, how asymmetrical it is uh, compared to some of our other POIs on the map. That's a draw to people that are really skilled. Uh, they seem to like this one for that reason. So this POI is the one furthest from obviously the terraformer. It's the very edge of the map. So this is probably the most alien, barren looking section of the map. You'll see a lot of this kind of red, mushroom fungus creepy tendril thing uh, all over the place we've also got pools of uh, blue oily liquid uh, around with some kind of uh some of the grass has kind of turned purpley blue as well as if it's been leaking into the vegetation and then the poi itself is this very strong orange uh to help pop it from the terrain this is a ship breaking yard right Ed? Yeah, this is yeah. where they bring ships to break down and, and send it through the uh, chain. Are there loot ticks on the map? I feel like yes. I hear one. Yes. Yes. Okay. So All right. We, I wasn't going crazy. <laughs> yeah. We brought back the loot ticks from King's Canyon as our loot mechanism for this map. They're, they're all over the place when you're running around. You'll hear them, hear them squeaking and calling to you. Yeah. This this map uh, or this POI is, is very much sort of like a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if many of you play uh, played the original Halo, but this one... Uh, I was going to say... When, when they... <laughs> When our designer built it, I was like, "This is very much like uh, that Halo map with the two black with the two ships um, yeah. from the original Halo." Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very boarding boarding action. Players. Yeah, it's trying yeah. to get the name boarding action. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like that, but it doesn't play like that. Um, it just it just reminds me of that in in spirit, I guess. But uh, yeah, there's a bridge in the middle you can use to cross. There's a zip rail. Um, so when you have two teams on either side, you can use like a the zip rail in the center to cross and make a make a quick push. Um, so when you're, when you're setting up, when you're trying to get a good defensive setup, it's, it's always good to sort of keep an eye on that bridge, keep an eye on that zip rail. Cause when you take the zip rail across, it is really sheltered. Um, so you sort of have to stand like right in front of it to get the most hits. Uh, if you're trying to do it from the side, they're going to get, they're going to get onto your platform. Yeah. And then there's just lots of, uh, lots of ways up, lots of little landing pads and stuff like that, um, that you can land at. I usually land at the back way at the back of this POI. Um, I'd say it's probably one of the safer POIs to land at because it is really, it is quite edge. It's one of the sort of, I'd say it's probably the furthest away as well. Um, and so it just brings that good balance that if you are looking for a safe point of interest to land at, this is one of them. Uh, and there's a couple of sneaky climbs that you might find uh, running around it. Yeah, it looks like a few people already found them, uh, but you can get on top of this as well. Um, and so again, if there's like no cover up here other than just the edges and trying to hide yourself, you can get sniped from, uh, you know, a bunch of different angles around. So it's not, it's not the strongest position. And yeah, again, there's no cover up here. So once you get shot, you pretty much have to jump off. I think that wraps up the tour. I think the only one we didn't go to was the backup Atmo, but you'll see if you look at both of those points of interest, they're very similar. Um, so they are they are pretty similar to each other, similar building, similar kind of layout as well. Now we're moving on to Daz's questions. First question is, how did the idea for zip rails come about? Um, this was an idea we were kicking around for a long time. Originally, it was an idea that was thought about for um, Olympus, I think, uh, but we cut that um, pretty quickly because um, we didn't really like where it was heading. Um, so we dug it up again because it was a, it was an idea that we were excited about, um, and uh, we really thought about like, okay, well, what if we add if we add these, like, what is the point? You know, like um, we already have zip lines, we already have uh, balloons, and all these other traversal things. So what what are we actually trying to accomplish here? And the thing we kind of landed on was we wanted more connectivity between the edge POIs because we find um, a lot of the times rotating around the edge of the map 
um, is a lot slower, it takes a lot longer, and the ring usually pulls you away from the edge. Um, so that was something that, that we thought was really, really interesting and a really good add that we could, we could include with the map. So you'll see a lot of the zip rails are actually connected to the outer POIs and allow you to do much longer, uh, much longer loops. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where that, that seed was planted. Awesome. All right. Next question is, what are the major design goals for Broken Moon? Yeah, so continuing with that same thread of, of zip rails, um, one of the goals that we were also thinking of was like, okay, well, how can we shake up kind of the traditional flow of a match? Um, you know, we find that uh, once you land an edge POI, your squad's trajectory is usually pretty similar, um, depending, of course, on which way the ring goes, but you're usually leaving those POIs in a, in a similar way or from a similar trajectory. So. We really wanted to think about like, well, what was a way that we could actually change your trajectory or change the way you're moving towards the ring quickly? Um, and so uh, that that's where zip rails kind of came in as well. And we, we wanted to give uh, people opportunities to not consistently have to rely on Valk in terms of like quick rotations um, and getting your squad out of harm's way. Um, so zip rails was like another opportunity for that. Um, so. You know, you might not always have to have Valk in your composition as a result. Cool. And then um, next up is how does this map reflect the team's philosophy on hot drops and third party? Yeah, so uh, our philosophy on hot drops is that they are healthy, but they get unhealthy when uh, there's too many people dogpiling. Because what that ends up doing is once everybody gets eliminated early on, fights last really long, um, and you get this weird pacing uh, issue kind of in the middle of the game where you're looking for squads and it's like, well, because they all died a fragment or whatever. Um, so it is it is part of the game um, and it's something that we designed for, for sure. Um, so something we tried with this map uh, that was a little different was um, making a few additional larger POIs. There are other maps that do have larger POIs, but in this map we have, I'd say we have more larger POIs than, than the other maps. Um, and so one of the things we were trying was just giving people more space um, to land at a POI, um, less uh, less like contestable spots, um, or sorry, more contestable spots right out of the gate. Um, but it, it makes it sort of that the POI, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, with the larger POIs, you basically have time to get like your footing. Um, so when you land, um, there, there are these hot spots where you can land to get the best loot, um, but there's also areas where you can land to get your footing, be more proactive about, you know, do you want to engage in this fight or do you want to get away? Um, and we found that with that, like not as many people dogpile all on the same POI because there is more space to share across the map. Um, so we, we thought that that was a pretty effective change. Um, and then as far as um, third partying, uh, we think it's a core element of the game. Um, we're not trying to remove third partying. Um, we think it's a very viable strategy. And uh, what we are trying to do though, is, is think about ways to kind of soften it up. You know, if like people are choosing to third party, um, is, is there a way that you can actually defend, defend against that? So um, balloons, you know, a balloon gives you free range, 360 degree control over how you want to drop on someone. Where with like a zip line or a zip rail, um, we find that the, the points are a little bit more fixed. So you kind of have an idea of where people are coming from. Uh, so it's a similar philosophy behind the uh, the launchers or the, or the cannons in, in Tropics that launch you on sort of a fixed trajectory. Awesome. And finally, how would you say that rotation feels on this map? I would say rotation feels good. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for large macro rotations with the zip rails, and then a lot of the points of interest um, we've built um, with that cat and mouse uh, uh, gameplay in mind, where um, you know if 